Fighting critters in the front yard, ever feel like you're in the front lines? You buy tons of name brand canned killers that swear up and down they'll take out the problem first spray. Well, our intel says otherwise. Forget all that. Call us, Old Colony Pest Control. Tell them that Red Revere sent you. We handle commercial and residential pest control needs. Take care of anything from ants, roaches, ticks, mosquitoes, rats, and more. No wildlife or termites at this time. Call us at 774-400-5993 and we'll bring in the big guns. job, a better home, a better life. Who hasn't wished for these things, worked for them, and sought a place where they had a better chance of becoming real? For generations, Brockton has welcomed those seeking something better. From those who came in search of opportunity, to today's multicultural population, that makes us the most diverse community in all of New England. Brockton is a place where homes are more affordable. Communities closer. Where a strong and talented workforce fuels the success of businesses big and small. And the vision of a more diverse and equitable America is being realized every day. It's where ideas take root, businesses grow, communities thrive, new beginnings unfold, and the promise of a better life is kept. Brockton, Massachusetts, where better begins. Merry Christmas, baby. Merry Christmas, baby. Did you get everything you wanted this year? No, you didn't get a job, fool. Bro, whatever you're trying to sell, we good. We're not trying to buy it. <laughs> like you could afford it. Trina, when you gonna get rid of this dude? Who are you? Well, I'm the ghost of Christmas Get Your Shit Together. And Trina, this is your intervention, girl. <laughs> Ladies, let's get it.
man is a bum. Girl, stop being weak. Your man is a bum. Throw him onto the street. Your man is a bum. Man is a bum. Man is a bum. You will be happy. So don't be. What the hell just happened? Uh, I don't know, but you got to get out by the end of this week. Hold on, wait. So we're not finna talk about what just happened? Look, you need to get your shit. You ain't got time. You need to get the packing. Hold on, wait. You do know it's Christmas, right? Exactly. Tis the season for you to get the fuck out of my house. Goodbye. Trina, don't you talk to me like that. You bring your ass back here you right now. But a bum ass nigga. You don't I know do you shit ain't for me. me a bum as long as you I've been taking care of you. This is some Bye, bullshit. Bye, Felicia. You don't do shit for me. You don't buy I do up everything for, me. You for you. Your hair you is do done because of me. And I'm about to pull that shit out. You ain't going to push it right out. Push it out. I know you ain't finna. Open my door. Open my door. Don't you drive. Don't you drive my car. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? This is blasphemy. This is madness. This is the boo. Oh, what's up, you guys? It's your boy, Sinister One, broadcasting live from the City of Champions. Excuse me. And uh, Bobby Barcelos. Yay, DJ Boom in the chat. Viana Marie, all you guys in the chat, what's up? Glad you guys liked the beginning of that show. Um, actually, last week's show was the first of those two. Um, it was, uh, actually, it was uh, um. Deck the Halls, or I forget what it was. Go look at last week's intro. If you loved the intro skit before this week's show, please, please, please go and look at last week's intro. It was it was great. I actually I actually might pull it up and show it to you guys uh, before we get out of here tonight if I have time. So my hot tea tonight in my Sinister One Productions cup. Boom. And uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. I got to thank my guests from last week, Angela Pride and Troy Pride Sr. They came on for Consult with Sports, Pride Sports, CWP, Consult with Pride Sports Consulting. Bam, got it. And I'm waiting for my hat. I'm waiting for my hat because I ordered a Pride hat, and I want that hat so I could sport it this week. So hopefully I'll get it. Uh, to you know, to rock for the first year, but again, I know last week I had on my clink room hat, floats like a butterfly, Muhammad Ali clink room hat exclusive. Ooh, ooh, some dust or something there. 
But as you know, I was rocking this at the Boston Music Awards. 2022 Boston Music Awards were last week at Big Night Live. Uh, we were there in the VIP. Chilling. 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 Me, Viana Marie, videographer of the year nominee, Scott Sandinato, who filmed Let's Roll. Pop Artist of the Year, Justin Clancy up in the VIP. Marika, photographer of the year nominee for Boston, up in the VIP with her parents. DJ legend, hip hop star, terminology up in the VIP with us, with his mom and family and his crew. Rapper Nines, K9s, what's up? Also, OG legend, Ed OG, was up there in there with us in the VIP. Check out all the pics. Elion V, Latin Artist of the Year nominee, up in the chat with us, chilling, doing big things. We was holding it down. We was holding it down. We was holding it down in the VIP, and there I was. But my clink room exclusive floats like a butterfly hat. Look at that embroidery. So big shout out to the Clink Room. The Clink Room's not a sponsor of this show, <laughs> but I know I've been giving them a lot of props because their hats are fire. I love my hats. And you know what? I would love to become a brand ambassador for them people because I love their hats, man. They got some good ass hats. Let me get into this show here. Um, but again, big thank you to Angela Pride and Troy Pride Sr. Coaching with Pride Sports Consulting. Check them out. They were on last week. Um, this is the last week. This is the last week, last show for 2022. As I go on hiatus, I take my time off. And, um, you know, I got to thank everybody for tuning in the chat. DJ Bobby Boone, Travis Partington, Oscar Mike Radio closing out his year. He's got his year end show coming up at the end of the month. Check him out. Um, Maddie C Sports for you and me. Got his couple of shows to hang out and do for the end of the year. And then he's going in hard for 2024. I'm, I'm producing. If you guys don't know this every year, every year we switch it up. We change it up. We change our backgrounds. We want it to be fresh every year. We don't want to be stale and, and, and do all this stupid ass, crazy ass stuff you see, um, on some of these zooms and things of that sort. Some of these people out here, they just throw up a zoom with no background, no overlays, nothing. And they call it, they, they, they want to call themselves podcasters. There's more to podcasting than just throwing up your Zoom and just, just going raw, raw dog. You got to put some work behind it. You got to put some work behind it. Put some, put some stuff from TV that you see on TV. There's a lot of stuff out there. As you can see, I got my sponsors. I got my stuff up here in the left-hand corner, you know? Uh, and, 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 and for next year, we ain't playing. Tennis One Productions next year is not playing for 2023. So you want to make sure you're going to tune into Oscar Mike Radio and see his new layout. You want to tune into Happy Hour with Lito, see his layout. Tune into Maddie C Sports for You and Me. See his brand new layout. And then June, th January 3rd is when I come back. January 3rd is when I come back. You want to make sure you check out the Boost new layout. Because <laughs> Sinister One Productions ain't messing around. We ain't messing around. We coming for heads next year in 2023. We coming for heads. We coming for heads. I see everybody out there. No disrespect. I see you all podcasting. I see y'all doing your thing. I see y'all grinding. But here's the problem, yo. I've been doing this since 2000. I was doing HTML writing on, on, on my web TV. Y'all are doing a damn good job of doing your podcast and things of that sort and trying to do real good. But look, we're going we gonna to be trying to set the bar for everybody next year. We're going to be trying to set the bar for everybody next year. For real. We want people to say, yo, what they bring in. <laughs> and, you know, there's other people I've been working on their shows behind the scenes. 
um, NWO podcast. I did a voiceover for NWO podcast for this guy, uh, Logan, out of uh, out of Ohio. It's a sports podcast. They talk about college football and um, high school football, college basketball, and things of that sort. So check out the NWO podcast. I did the voiceover for the intro for his show. Um, I'm going to see if I uh, talk back with Gloria Shea. We'll be back next year. Um, she talks football podcast. I got to see about them if they're if they're coming back. She she talks football podcast. She was doing her podcast this year, but then she when she went on um, that there's that other platform where you go and you and you speak and everybody you know that it's like a it's like a chat room and I I always forget the name because I'm not really on it because it's like mad it's like mad confusing <laughs> when you get on it because everybody's talking over each other and stuff. But she's on that platform and um, she's doing very well. She's doing very well on there. So Regina, um, I would be surprised if Regina's podcast may not be back for next year because she's doing so well on this other platform, which is like, it's like Twitter spaces. I, oh my goodness. And I'm, um, uh, if you guys can remember and drop in the chat, I'm, I'm not on it, so I don't use it that much, but it's, it's, you know, people go in there and they talk. It says no video or nothing, but they just, they all talk. And sometimes they, it's just crazy, but it's working for her and she's killing it. And um, I, I'm pretty sure I, if she was to ask me, Clubhouse, yes, thank you, Bobby. Clubhouse, that's exactly what it is. I I don't use it. I, I get on there and just everybody's just talking to each other, and it just and then you gotta you know you gotta wait and ask, and then there's like a hundred people in the group, and everybody's just, you know it it just it's like for me I feel like if Clubhouse works for you, utilize it, work it, work for it. For me, I feel like Clubhouse for me is a step back for what I've done. You know, I've been on radio, AM radio. I've been on um, internet radio in its early, early beginnings. And now I've taken podcasting to where it is today. And for me, you know, I feel like, I feel like, and I'm pretty sure Travis Proddington, who I helped him get Oscar Mike Radio off the ground. I feel like if if you, if your main focus is rolling on Clubhouse, stick to Clubhouse. It's because it, it, it's, it's building. It's got its own little niche. But if you've been podcasting, you put this time and effort in, and you've got a solid video podcast. I feel like Clubhouse is a step back. Is it? Is it an add-on? Is it an extension? To be honest, it, some may say, since the one you're wrong, it's a great extension. I don't feel it's an extension. I feel like if you're someone like us, like like Maddie C Sports for you and me, Happy Hour with Lido, um, Oscar Mike Radio, if you're already established and stuff, I feel like Clubhouse is going only going to hurt our platforms. I feel like Clubhouse is something maybe you do on a quick, you know, like on a quick thing, like a quick ad. I, for me, with all the producing I'm doing on the outside and for the stuff I'm doing with the booth, I feel like Clubhouse for me, just it just isn't worth it. I'd rather people come into my chat here. And if you got something you want to say or something you want to discuss, I'd rather you come here. That's just me. That's how I am because I've been doing this for a long time. And, you know, and like I said, I'm not knocking anybody who's using Clubhouse. But I feel like you have to have a certain niche for Clubhouse. If it works for you, use it, and I wish you much success with it. Um, but I, for me, it, you're not going to see Sinister One on Clubhouse. You're not going to see you getting an invite to Sinister One on Clubhouse because um, I just feel like it's not for me and my product. I'm not down in it. If it works for you, use it. But it, like I said, it's not for me, and, and I wish Regina a ton of luck because she's killing it on clubhouse he's killing it on clubhouse so if you can um follow she talks football on um clubhouse thank you guys for letting me know thank you thank you thank you and i see all you guys in the chat hanging out maggie penny what's going on maddie cameron killing it like i said 2023 with like matt judon says that's gonna be sinister one productions in 2023 in January, I need everybody to tune into each of the shows that I produce and watch the new overlays. Y'all see the background going on right now? You know? I got a Christmas background. I had a Halloween background. So, I'm, you know, I try to take care of people. You know? I try to do this. And I got my sponsors. You know what I'm saying? So let me, let me show you this. Let me get into my sponsors. And, and a couple of my sponsors are doing some videos now. Yep, see, Travis Proddington, I don't mind being in the club, clubhouse room, but Travis says it definitely won't re it won't replace OMR. It, it, it won't. It won't. And see, Travis, for Travis, clubhouse works for him because Travis has a show that, that speaks with topics involving veterans. 
and to be honest, on Clubhouse, where you're speaking with veterans and where you've got a case such as, 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 as Travis is breaking down right now, I am Denisha Montgomery Smith, hashtag I am Denisha, where this woman was was an MP and she reported um, an abuse and then she you know felt weird she felt didn't feel right she ended up videotaping her family and then within days of sending this videotape she ends up dead and the military ruled it a suicide and guess what the military is in the they're in the process of clearing it up and the family's trying to expose them and and all of this has been going on on travis's show so please go and check out oscar mike radio he's like five shows in on this thing and it's just been crazy clubhouse is nice for that for Oscar Mike Radio. Why? Because Travis can bring in people who may want to speak on this and be anonymous. You see what I'm saying? So for me, it doesn't work. For Travis, like Travis, somebody, he can make it work for him. And and Clubhouse is good like that because you can bring people in, people can give their responses or their thoughts on something like that type of story and be anonymous which is huge, huge, huge. So like he said, he don't mind being in the clubhouse room, but it will not replace OMR. And you know, I might become a hypocrite like Dana White. A few years down the line, I might find that clubhouse works for me, but I can tell you right now, the way that I do this show and the way that I, I have a passion for doing this video production, things of that sort, I probably won't. But anybody else out there, if you're using it and you're doing it, Good job. Like I said, Regina is killing it. <laughs> Regina is killing it. My man, Tyrone Washington. What's going on? Tyrone Washington's watching the show, checking in. And we got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff to show you. Um, let me get into my sponsors real quick. Michael Douglas Barreto, MDB Electronics. Oh, somebody, somebody wanted to know um, on YouTube, somebody said they can't see my shirt. My shirt says, I am not Santa. I am not Santa, but you can sit on my lap anyway. <laughs> I am not Santa, but you can sit on my lap anyway. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I was I would have set the Playboy Mansion about three years ago. No, sir. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I've never been to the Playboy Mansion. But if you want to send an invite, send us one at MSN.com. I'll be there. <laughs> uh, and then in, in my sponsors, I'm a fool tonight. Don't, don't bother me. Um, Michael Douglas Beretta, <laughs> MDB Electronics. If you got a controller that fades or drifts, get it out to him. It's back within 24, 48 hours. Also available now, Vianna Marie, It's Personal. That album came out in August on her birthday. The 13th was her birthday party celebration, and um, the, it's available now. And I, I, I've I, got some statistics and numbers just from one website we deal with, Digital DJ Pool. This is, this is strictly a website for DJs like me. And what we do is we put the songs there, we post them, and then people pull them from all over the world, and then we get to see those statistics and for Vianna Marie's album right now, her album is doing better now in the August, September, October, November, in the five months, in the five months that her album has been out, um, in the DJ, just the digital DJ franchise pool alone. Um, she's at 40, 50, 60,000, um, engagements. Um, and she's gotten radio airplay. Um, she's getting nightclubs and bar airplay. But here's the problem that I'm having. All of the nightclub and bar airings and the playing of her song are all outside of Boston. Mad, We get mad love from outside of Boston. And this is the problem with Boston that people complain about. People talk about Boston not supporting each other, you know, and, 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 it, and it's crazy. It's crazy to see, you know, you go in and you see three radio stations, um, uh, Seattle, Washington, um, hot, um, 96.9, Cobb 96.9 out of Seattle, Washington has played five songs off her album. <laughs> five songs. Um, Lock and Hall in Detroit, Michigan has been bumping her music. Like, look, Lock and Hall in Detroit has been bumping Vianna Marie's music so much on Friday nights 
that we're we've been thinking about going out there and doing the show. That that's how real it is, people. So you know what? We'd love to see some more Boston love from Boston Radio and uh Boston clubs and, and see it because people are probably like, how's he even getting these? We get the analytics, yo. The, the artists have to get paid for where their music's played. And all this stuff is tracked now. All this is tracked now. Travis Pronington says the same thing. Yep, I get more support outside of New England than here. It's weird. <laughs> it's it's the way. It, look, I could do a whole show on support outside of the box where you, get, you can get support from complete strangers from outside the box, outside the state, sharing your stuff on a on a on a on a daily basis. But the people you know right here in this city, in this state, it's it's insane, bro. It's it is. It's insane. It's crazy. Um, tactical target systems. Yep, Matt Cameron, Canada. Matt Cameron actually has a, a show that he did with Knuckles Nyland. NHL. That show got like fifteen thousand views. Fifteen thousand views. All them hockey fans coming down and checking out. All the stuff that he was posting, it's crazy. It's crazy stuff. Tactical target systems, they actually just put a video out, John Robinson, about some of his tactical targets. Now, I use the zombie targets that you see pictured here, but they also have long rifle targets. They have uh, pistol targets. Um, you know, so we got to, you know, if you want to check them out, tactical target systems is where you want to go. Order some targets. They use the best paper out there for their targets. That's their biggest boast. I didn't even know this. For all of the targets out there, Tactical Target Systems uses the best paper for their targets than any other target company. I didn't know that. That was that was uh, and that was mentioned in the video. So please, please check them out. They're now on social media. They're on Instagram. Uh, Don's got them on Facebook. He's cutting some promos. I'm going to actually get permission to see if I can use a promo on my show for him. Better than a Buick. I don't, I'm confused. Better than the Buick? I'm not sure. Buick's a car. So was I just talking about cars? And then I didn't. I see Tom McGinty in there. Um, also, I love Boston sports. I've been dropping the ball because I actually cut an ad for I love Boston sports that was supposed to play this year. I cut an ad and I haven't completed the ad yet for their store. I got to get my button gear. I got to get my button. And I owe people shirts too. I owe people hurts. So bad. Carbonell, veteran owned, residential and commercial, 774 400 5993. We support our veterans here. Veteran owned businesses. We support veteran owned businesses. We support minority owned businesses. We support first responder businesses. If you've seen it and we go along, if you saw Don Robinson, Don Robinson is a retired police officer from LA. That's his business. Carbonell is a veteran. That's his business. All right. So we support these guys here. If you got any pests, reach out to Carbonell Veteran Owned Residential and Commercial 774 400 5993. And then we're going to get into the news booth. In the news booth, a 6.4 um, 6 California earthquake shakes the early morning. Um, leaving people without power. I haven't heard that there's been any deaths yet, but a 6.4. Actually, California's had quite a few, quite a few earthquakes in the last uh, couple of, actually this year, they've had a few six points this year. So, um, you know, everybody always says the big one, you know, and we, we haven't seen it, you know, 1976. Earthquake and sense around. Remember that movie back then? I'm dating myself right now, but in 76, sense around. Earthquake. That was the, the big one. Remember with Charlton Heston? Remember when they showed it on TV? Remember when Earthquake finally came on, on, on regular TV? They had to show it on three, in three nights because it was so long. <laughs> that was a long-ass movie. It was, one of, it was the start. Was Earthquake the start of the disaster films? No, no, no. I don't, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't think Earthquake was the start of that in 76. No, I think I think it was Poseidon Adventure where the ship got flipped over by the wave, and then I think after Poseidon Adventure, 
it was Towering Inferno, and then we had Earthquake. And then after Earthquake, we had Roller Coaster, where you had the terrorists. Oh, my God. That the, ter- If you all haven't seen the movie Roller Coaster, the movie Roller Coaster actually friggin' it kept me off roller coasters for the longest time because it was a terrorist who was planting bombs on roller coaster tracks. And then he would set the bombs off and it would blow the track up. And then the roller coaster would come around the loop. And that was when the loop coasters were just coming out. The loop coaster was just coming out. And check this movie out. Maggio Gortner is the bomber. And we all know who Maggio Gortner is because Maggio Gortner plays the sick F in almost every film. The first film that Michael Gortner was in and he got shot and killed as a sick F was like Magnum Force or Dirty Harry or something. He was in that. And then from then on, he was typecast as a sick mother <laughs> for the rest of his life. Michael, if you saw Michael Gortner, you knew he deserved to die. You knew he was some type of diddler or some type of terrorist or, or something. You knew he was dead. He was going to be dead by the end of whatever you was watching. <laughs> but yeah, I think Roller Coaster was like the fourth of those disaster movies. Um, and then, you know, we didn't have any really big budget disaster movies for a while until like independence day, independence day was when we got to see the next big disaster. <laughs> DJ boom said no bombs on roller coasters. That's free. Check it out. If you guys haven't seen it, roller coaster was the name of the movie. It was a disaster movie about a terrorist blowing up roller coasters. And and yo, it was grizzly. Like, the, oh man, oh, it was. It, it trust me. If you watch this movie, it may just scare you like it did me from watching roller coasters. But I digress. I I just I just went completely off the rails. I was supposed to be talking about this earthquake, and I did, but but I think it is. I think Poseidon Adventure was first. I think Tower Inferno came. I might be wrong. Tower Inferno might have came before Poseidon Adventure, but that was the start of the so-called disaster movies. And we, you know, we had our airplane movies. We had all those airplane movies, but um, those disaster movies were were crazy. They started setting that tone, and it was like a, it was, all those disaster movies were all big budgets. They had like the biggest actors, you know, like they they broke the budget on all the friggin' crazy actors that they had in it. Um, actually, Earthquake in '76 had a cameo from someone who was a, a stunt bike rider. <laughs> and um, it was, yeah, yeah. So check it out. Um, Sintis, uh, for you guys who don't know, you have um, uniform companies. You have all these uniform companies. You have Unifirst, you have Sintis. Sintis is, a, is one, I would say Sintis is, might be the number one, number two um, uniform supplier. Sintis has now added 14,000 electric vehicles. Sintis is actually um, the uniform provider for Paul Revere Transportation, um, which is um, my Bruce Wayne job. <laughs> my Bruce Wayne job. In other words, I'm Sinister One here on the booth, but then when I leave Sinister One, uh, my, my, my Bruce Wayne job is Paul Revere Transportation. But Sintis, you know, does our laundry. Um, they have now added 14,000 EVs to their fleet, and it's going to keep going. Um, I just saw that the U.S. military has now been approved for $60 million for EVs autonomous. EV autonomous vehicles. These are self-driving vehicles for the military. Um, $60 million, or may, it might even be $60 billion, But I, if I get that story, I'll share it with you guys um, first of the year, because there should be a great update on that one as we're headed towards this ban. Um, that's coming down. Bobby, DJ Bobby Boom says they wash my pants. <laughs> no problem, man. Um, people, all you people who are on my Facebook, the Skip Clays, um, all you you Trump supporters who keep going back and forth and talking about Democrats versus Republicans. It's all about this. And, all, and I've been telling people, we've been talking about this on the booth the first Tuesday every month. We've been telling people that. The real problem isn't the Democrats versus the Republicans. The real problem is the GOP, period. The GOP is in a real dangerous place. So when Joe Biden got into office, the picture you see here is Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene. 
This was when they were heckling Joe Biden. Best of friends. They've been this. They've been that. They've been this and they've been that. But as this, and we're gonna, I'm going to get into this, as this January 6th thing came down and, and people have been dividing themselves, well, November just happened. We've had our elections. Lauren Boebert won Colorado by 500 seats, votes, by 500 votes. 500 votes. They had to go to a recount. And she won the recount by 500 and something votes. Well, guess what's happened with Lauren Boebert, people? Lauren Boebert secured her position in Colorado, but she has done quickly an about face. Why? Because I'm pretty sure the people that got her in and her people that work with her behind the scenes said, hey, guess what? You're lucky your ass got in with the 500 votes. You almost lost this election because you are linked to President Donald Trump and all these crazy lies about conspiracy theories and all this violence and things of that sort. You need to make a decision. And guess what? It didn't take long for Lauren Boebert to flip the script. Once those counts were done, Lauren Boebert has flipped the script. She's been vocal. She's kind of distancing herself away from the Trump people and kind of moving towards DeSantis, like I told people, this is going to happen. The GOP is going to back DeSantis. But like I said, Trump has 70 million people who voted for him, and they got to nip away, nip away, nip away. And I'm going to talk to how the GOP is about to do this. But Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert, they went at it because Lauren Boebert has now flipped the script. Marjorie Taylor Greene has now called her out and says, whoa, whoa. Her herself, President Trump, and all these other crazy lunatics have poured money into her campaign for her to win that election. So now they feel like you owe us. And this is why I hate politics, because when people dump money into your campaign, you're obligated to them. And you shouldn't be. But that's how it works, people. The gun lobbyists. The tobacco lobbyists lobbied for years on the Hill. But then when when smoking became such a danger and people were dying, guess what happens? That money that the back the tobacco companies were dumping on in Washington became irrelevant. And we're seeing this now with the opiate addiction lawsuits. All that money by Big Pharma was it, it gets pulled back. It gets pulled back, you know? <clears throat> So Boebert has flipped the script and we're an MTG. They're not buddies no more. They're going at it. They're calling each other out. Um, and it's getting ugly. It's getting ugly. And and when I talk about these extreme white right wingers, um, Kari Lake from Arizona, who lost the election and demanded a recount. And she lost the recount. And then she went on this crazy tirade about the election being fixed and stolen, and she's completely aligned herself with Donald Trump. And then she goes to this event this past weekend. They had this turning point GOP event where they had all of these people to represent the GOP. Now, I watched some of this, and it's it was it's scary, people, because if you watch this turning point event, the battle lines within the GOP is being drawn headed into 2024. And this is a scary thing, people. This is real scary because it's going to split the GOP as we know it. Trump and his people are going to split this GOP. Trump is not going to go away quietly, people. They've already announced this January 6th. We're going to talk about this. He's not going away quietly. Some of these people are go I I'm scared because my feeling is, is okay, what's, hap what's about to happen about January 6th? He's going to lose his mind, and, and, and look, if he ends up in jail, who knows what some of these crazy people are going to think. But this is Kyrie Lake. Check out Kyrie Lake this weekend. This is scary. Now, you've seen politicians. You've seen how they've acted in the press. You've seen how they talk to people out in public, right? This is Kyrie Lake, who just lost her election in, in, in Arizona. Check this out. Check this out. I want you to know that I identify as a proud election-denying deplorable. Are you with me? 
That is failed Arizona gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake. The Republican declared, I'm a proud election denying deplorable during an utterly unhinged speech. And my pronouns are I won. Here she is talking about Donald Trump. He and I have become good friends. That man cares more about this country than anybody I know. He's given up more than anybody I know. And these bastards of the media want to drag him through the mud. Yes, she really gave the F you salute to photographers in that Arizona ballroom, but those were not members of the media. She was actually insulting a production crew for Turning Point USA, the conservative summit organizer. <laughs> Lake is such a pathetic human being. Good grief. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster, and thanks for joining us. Even in the context of lunatic speeches, the remarks by Carrie Lake at this conservative event were some of the most bizarre many of us have ever seen. The words weird and unhinged don't even do justice to the putrid crap that Lake spewed. Lake has refused to concede the Arizona governor's race since losing by 17,000 votes in November to Secretary of State Katie Hobbs. Lake has produced no evidence that the election was stolen or that anything should change the outcome. And in fact, a judge has now sanctioned Lake's legal team for the way they have mishandled the lawsuit. The judge ruled that Lake's team made false, misleading, and supported fictional assertions to the court. But Lake, instead of taking responsibility for her lawyer's malfeasance, is now claiming that the courts are trying to silence her legal team. So Lake is asking conservatives to pray for her and her lawyers because, you know, Lake thinks that God should be on the side of conservative fantasy land, not on the side of basic democracy, facts, or justice. Sounds familiar, right? A conservative loses an election, cannot accept the results, and has to lie, mislead supporters, and pervert God. No wonder Carrie Lake and Donald Trump are such good friends. Like Donald Trump, Carrie Lake is also hinting at violence. She told the audience on Sunday that the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, is in danger because of Democrats. And then she said, you do not steal our vote and get away with it. You do not. Until a few weeks ago, the longtime local television news anchor was regarded as one of the brightest stars in the Republican Party. But like Donald Trump, Lake has repeatedly discredited herself and made herself appealing only to the GOP's most psychopathic lunatic fringe. In the final weeks of her gubernatorial campaign, Lake appeared to encourage violence. She also mocked the attack on Paul Pelosi, the husband of Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Now, Lake is comparing her election challenge to the founding father's fight against British tyranny. Lake has repeatedly named Benjamin Franklin and others and said, their blood is coursing through our veins. They were fed up with the tyrants, Lake said, and they weren't going to take it anymore. I think we are right there, said Lake. Actually, Carrie, right now, you are in need of a mental institution with padded walls. If anything, the founders of this country are rolling in their graves at your paranoid schizophrenia and contempt for democracy. Many of us used to think that Trumpism would go away with Donald Trump, but Kerry Lake serves as a reminder that fact-free fascism and narcissism can sprout up anywhere. And as you see, you know, as some of these GOP members come to their senses and start leaning towards DeSantis, the GOP extreme right is latching on to these people like Kari Lake and making them the forefront all of a sudden. Now, just three months ago, she didn't like Donald Trump, but she lost her election and this is what she does. This is what she says. And in the legal booth, going into the legal booth, as you heard, um, she had went to court and it came out today. She suffered defeat. She went to court and they ruled eight. They dismissed eight of the baseless claims. Um, the judges told her she has 48 hours to prove the other two claims. If she can't prove her two claims, guess what? It's going to be thrown out and dismissed. She's going to lose 10 out of 10 with dismissals on this case, just like Donald Trump and his court cases. He lost them pretty much 99%, all of them, done, lost. So this is, this is the problem, people. The GOP is headed to its own implosion if they don't fix this problem right now. I've said it. The DeSantis is going to be the nominee. And 
Trump is just waiting for them to announce that, and he's going to unleash hell. But the GOP is already doing what they need to do to get Donald Trump out the picture and secure pulling these 70 million votes against their will. Why? Because the January 6th committee, which is made up of more GOP members than there is Democratic members, the GOP committee has now referred to the DOJ to put criminal charges against President Donald Trump. Four counts. Four counts. Four counts. And one of those is inciting the January 6th insurrection. And guess what, people? If he's found guilty by the DOJ on this, the GOP that's planning on backing DeSantis will be dancing in the streets. Why? Because if he is convicted, he can't run. To wrap. To wrap. There'll be no 2024 if he's convicted. And the GOP knows exactly what the hell they're doing. So when I have all these people on my page, they're talking about the Democrats. It's not the Democrats. Donald Trump's biggest enemy is the GOP that's about to support DeSantis. And it is going to split the party as we know it. And the GOP will fail to exist as we know it. And this is history in the making. Trust me, you're hearing it here. We've been talking about this. We've been following it. We've been nailing it. We've been telling you all this stuff before everybody else out there. Because we watch, we pay attention. We've been doing politics. I've been holding signs for people in pol- in politics since I was 16 years old. I've been voting since I was 18. I've always been obsessed and watched how these lines are drawn and how this happens. And I'm just telling you, people, keep an eye on this GOP. It's about to get ugly. Donald Trump was already on True Social, ripping them apart, ripping them apart. Carrie Lake, it, it, it's, you know, it is going to be crazy, people. Keep an eye on this. Keep an eye on this, because this isn't going to get any any nicer. <laughs> it isn't. It is not. Um, banks. Let's get into the elitists in banks. Wells Fargo. This 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 lawsuit was flying under the radar. Nobody even knew about this. Now, on top of all these banks like Bank of America and stuff, discriminating black people and things of that sort, Wells Fargo has to pay $3.7 billion. Now, I have a friend. I have a friend. She lives in Baltimore, Maryland. She got a check because in her state of Maryland, Um, In in Baltimore, they had a lawsuit against a bank out there for overdraft fees and things of that sort. Guess what? They won their case and they had to pay everybody back. They had to pay everybody back. So here, here's a new one now, people. Pay attention to this one. Wells Fargo, which for a while there was doing a ton of home loans. Actually, my house, my house was mortgaged through Wells Fargo through my credit union. (coughs) But Wells Fargo was doing bank loans for cars, mortgages, and and things of that sort. You know what Wells Fargo was doing that they got to pay $3.7 billion out to customers? You want to know what they was doing? Some crazy, yo, this is some crazy stuff. So here's what they were doing. First of all, they were purposely making people's bank accounts negative by posting deposits in the wrong places. So say if you're doing your banking through them and you have a a savings account and this account and, and then something else. So they would put the money in the wrong account, your wrong account. Then this account would end up overdrawn or your mortgage payment would end up being late. And you got all these overdraft fees and you're paying these all out. Guess what? They were purposely doing it. Think about that, people. Here you are. Here's 3.7 billion. Think about this. These are customers who had weekends or holidays ruined because of overdraft fees going crazy. And you you say, man, I, I know I did this. And you guess what? You probably did. But the bank behind the scenes was messing with your money, your deposits, your mortgage payment. And then they were bleeding you with overdraft fees and late fees purposely. They knew about it. 
Think about that. This is just Wells Fargo. This is just Wells Fargo people. Think about that. That is insane. A bank is supposed to be a trusted institution. A trusted institution. And instead, it doesn't even matter if you're black or white. They're ripping everyone off. I, I've said this. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's coming. Just like we're seeing the opiate lawsuits, we're going to see the bank lawsuits. Because I wish people would get angry more at this and start demanding all the banks. Show how they have ripped people off with these overdraft fees and how they make it snowball. They know what the hell they're doing. I've heard people, I've been caught up in that when I was younger. I've been caught up in it when you, you're told, oh, yeah, you know, this here and this and that. And, you know, it's all these big banks. <clears throat> it's Wells Fargo. It's Bank of New England. It's all these big banks doing it, which is why I was always told, put your money in a credit union. And my money has been in a credit union ever since. Ever since. So, uh, Bobby, DJ Boom says, I love my Chime account. No charges for nothing that's coming, though. Nothing lasts forever, Bobby. You know why? Because the government got to take their cut. Look, everybody was cash apping. Everybody was PayPaling. Everybody was Venmoing. And look what happened. <coughs> you got to file taxes. Why? Because people were doing big budget transactions and bypassing taxes. So as of next year, you're going to be getting taxed on any transaction over $600 on Venmo or, or Cash App. Coming. I mean, you're already on PayPal for the last three years. PayPal, you've been report, you've had to report um, money as income. They send you a, a, a tax form to claim income. So it, it, if you've got some type of account or some type of thing where you're not getting charged for nothing right now, Eventually, you will. Trust and believe me. You eventually will. It's coming. It never fails. Once they feel like you're, you're because the banks don't want, the banks don't want that threat. And trust and believe me, the banks are responsible for coming after PayPal, for coming after um, Cash App, for coming after Venmo. Blame the banks. They went and cried to the government. <laughs> oh, they're doing this much money in transfers, and we're not getting our cut. Trust and believe me. Trust and believe me. Um, in the entertainment booth, <laughs> I got Jupy trying to get up in here. You gotta get down. Be patient. Um, <laughs> come on, girl. <laughs> I know the problem is she gotta go out. I see you. I hear you. You gonna make me? You gonna make me take a break? Look, 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 look at Jupy here. She's she's here. She gotta go out, and um, she wants me to take her out. <laughs> you gotta wait. Hold on. Wait. Right. Let me get in the entertainment booth, and then I'll take her out on a when I show a, a highlight or something. Um, rest in peace, Stephen Twitch. Suicide, 40 years old, wife and kids. He was Ellen DeGeneres' DJ on her show. Um, he was found in a hotel with a, an apparent gunshot wound, self-inflicted. And um, it's sad, sad. And his mom just put a post on social media in regards to his death and um, mental illness is real, people. And I see a lot of people out there saying that this is some type of conspiracy theory this and that, and you know, they they think that they're they're Ellen's trying to cover something up because um Ann H also um was a suicide and and they're saying it wasn't and you know it self apparent wound that this is what the coroner's report and you know they go and they measure and, it, and I'm not gonna get into the craziness of it, but it's sad. Uh mental illness, you know, people who you think are the happiest and you know, he's all over TikTok and Instagram, dancing with everybody and this and that. But guess what? More money, more problems is real, people. More money, more problems is real. It doesn't cure happiness. It doesn't cure 
depression that doesn't cure a mental illness. We've seen it with Robin Williams. We've seen it with so many people that have had everything in front of them. And, you know, you're still not happy. So it's tough. tough. Um, also, speaking of mental illness, Jamie Spears, father of Britney Spears, speaks out for the first time on the conservatorship. And um, he said he was doing the best he could to protect his daughter's best interest. Um, this is a guy who's living in a friggin' trailer park in Georgia. He's been living in a trailer park, even when he was under this. He wasn't taking any money from her. He was living in a trailer park in Georgia. Um, he never took a dime from his daughter. Um, he only took what legally he was bound to take because the conservatorship watched over him and what he did. Um, if you can check out the interview, check it out, because at the end of this interview, um, he, his last words were, Look what look what's going on now, and he's referring to the train wreck of social media of Britney Spears. Um, if you guys haven't seen this past weekend, Britney Spears was upset and went on this tirade on Instagram because she went through drive through and started singing a song at KFC to the guy at drive through, and it was a young kid. And guess what? The young kid didn't know who she was. He just thought she was this crazy chick getting KFC at the drive-thru and was singing and she went on Instagram and wrote this whole tirade about the fat guy at KFC and how he didn't know her and how disrespectful it was that he didn't know her song and how he said oh that's good he didn't really praise her that scary that is scary people This is this is that's that that's that cry that we see on her social media that cry for acceptance. And I'm pretty sure what happened at the KFC drive through messed Britney up. Messed Britney up. I'm sure of it. So her father breaks the silence. If you want to check it out, there's a there's a whole interview on this. Um about this and um it's sad the, the whole thing's sad he just all he wanted was to protect his daughter chris gagney i see you in the chat what's going on thank you for tuning in the show samuel L. jackson <coughs> happy hair day on sesame street i love it i love samuel jackson being on happy hair day on, on sesame street but why <laughs> Samuel Jackson has been bald forever. So why? I got to watch it. I got to see how does Samuel Jackson fit? Why isn't somebody like Troy Polamalu on Happy Hair Day for Sesame Street? Or somebody like Trevor Lawrence for Happy Hair Day? I, I don't get it. I got to see. I got to see how Samuel L. Jackson... It's in the Sesame Street. For those who don't know, Sesame Street is now on HBO. It's been on HBO for like three years now. It's not on WGBH Channel 2. Um, Sesame Street is part of HBO. Um, you can check it out there. I believe if you Google it, you'll find out the date that it's going to air. Um, big, one, big one here. WWE is closing out the year with probably one of the biggest matches of the year on SmackDown. On December 30th, SmackDown's final show of the year will feature the return of John Cena, Boston's own. John Cena will team up with Kevin Owens, who has a huge attachment to the Boston area, even though he's from Canada. Kevin Owens did a lot of his independent days and grind here in the New England area. He, We, we actually, Mark Chappetta did a thing with Jerry the King Lawler and, and, and Kevin Owens. At that time, his name was Kevin is or something of that sort but yeah he was he was a huge independent around here in the new england area for the longest time before blowing up um they will take on roman reigns and Sami Zayn on december 30th so you know where my butt will be plopped on december 30th <laughs> oh man watching smackdown watching smackdown in the sports booth what's going on dennis don you thank you for tuning in in the sports booth. Oh, y'all know what's coming up in the sports booth, right? Y'all know what's coming up in the sports booth, right? Because y'all see me lose my mind. Oh, man. Oh, in the local sports booth. 
Simpson Okunlola commits to Miami football. Now, Samson, see this kid right here? The Okunlolas. Look, I remember them when their parents came to registration and signed them up for Brockton Junior Boxers football. They were coming outside. We were having signups at, at, at that time. It was Models. And they was coming out of the supermarket, and they signed up and registered their kids to play football. And I remember the kids were, oh, we yeah, yeah, play football. And now look at these kids, all of them. All of them, big, fast, strong, committing to colleges. It is crazy to see these young men that I've watched through Pop One of Football committing Miami's yo committing to Miami. That's not look. That's a come on now, Dwayne Johnson, Ray Lewis. Come on, Warren Sapp. Do we do we need to go on? Do we need to continue? As what products the University of Miami has turned out for linemen and linebackers? Do we do we do we need to get into this? Brockton's own has now committed to Miami football. Who he is the first senior in Massachusetts, I believe, to be a five-star recruit. Applause. Keep your eyes on him, guys. Keep your eyes on him. Um Here it is, people. I didn't even want to talk about it, but I got him. Because I was mad. And I, and, I, and I actually picked the Raiders to win this game. Because I've got the Patriots 8-9 and nine for the season. And I'm sticking by it. But what happened this past weekend, and I called it. I was so mad I called it. I said, I said how are you going to let him become a meme for the rest of his life? And sure enough, the memes came. The memes came with a vengeance. Jacoby Myers tries to lateral the ball with no time on the clock. Gets intercepted by former Patriot Chandler Jones up until this time. No other Patriot has come back to burn us that Belichick has gotten rid of. But now it has happened. Chandler Jones picks it off. Takes it all the way to the end zone. In what people are calling the dumbest play in the history not just the weekend, the dumbest play in the history of the NFL. The NFL has been around for more than 100 years. The dumbest play in the history of the NFL. And you know what? I love my Patriots. I support my Patriots. I will be honest with my Patriots Whenever I talk about it, and I will be honest right here, right now, I totally agree that this will probably, look, when they do NFL all-time blunders, <laughs> when time films and all them do that on NFL Network, and they do the, do, do the, 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 the all-time top 100 of all-time blunders, if this ends up being number one, I'm not going to hate. <laughs> I, look, I'm not going to hate. Look, and I put my own spin on it for you. Here it is. Here's what went down in the Patriots loss to the Raiders, 30 to 24. Here we go. Mac Hollins out on defense. He's all the way back. And Stevenson. Is anyone going to do that? on the 30, flips it back. It was at this moment that he knew he fed up. Stanford band nowhere in sight. Uh oh, it's picked off. Uh oh, damn! Oh, oh no! Unbelievable! Oh wow! Incredible! Chandler Jones takes it in and wins the game for the Raiders. Oh! 
Have you ever seen an ending I've like that I've never one? seen anything like that. I have no idea why he was doing that. Oh, my goodness. Jesus, God, <laughs> tap dancing Christ. Thank you, T-Pain. That's how I felt. <laughs> and have you, have you guys ever seen that many memes in the highlight? <laughs> That's how I felt. I don't need to say any more. Unbelievable. And also to piss me off was the catch that was made in the end zone that the foot was on the sideline. And the vice president, Walt Anderson of officiating, he turned around in a pool report for the press. He broke it down. And here was their excuse. This game was flexed to 430. So it was no longer a national game. Because this game was no longer a national game, they were not able to supply. Get this, people. Hold on. Hold on your seats. They were not able to supply enough in zone cameras, you know, the pylon cams with the four cameras inside that go on each end zone sideline so they can see if a person breaks the plane or if somebody breaks the, 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 the out of bounds, you know, you know, those cameras, you know, the cameras that 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 uh, one point something billion dollar industry in the NFL should be able to afford like. Like stopping a dollar tree. You know, you know, you know that business, right? They didn't have enough pylon cameras for for this game. So all of the shots that they got in New York from the pylon cams didn't have the overhead camera shot that they showed on TV, that they showed on replay, that they showed in Allegiant Stadium's Jumbotron, where even the fans and players and everybody knew it was out of bounds. But because they called it a touchdown, it has to there has to be conclusive evidence to reverse the call. Because of it being called a touchdown on the field, conclusive evidence. Guess what? Walt Anderson says we didn't have it. We didn't have that overhead shot. We only had the sideline and the back of the end zone shot, and it wasn't clear enough, so it stayed a touchdown. It stayed a touchdown for that reason. Are you, are you? Stop it. Well, then get some more cameras then, Walt Anderson. Get some more cameras. It's been crazy. This has been all season. Y'all been dropping. Officiating's been horrible. Oh, not just with the Patriots. Y'all, y'all, y'all see the end of that Washington game. Y'all see the end of the Washington game. If I'm if I'm a Redskins fan, I'm pissed. Dude was he? Look, the Giants defender had the wide receiver wrapped, wrapped up, wrapped up. They called. There was no flag in the end zone. Incomplete pass, game over, Redskins lose, Giants win. Why? In my opinion, why? Because right now, and my friend Dennis Donahue, who's a big Redskins fan on here, oh, 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 oh. I apologize. I'm sorry. I got to reel it back. Washington Commanders. Washington Commanders. Sorry, people. Sorry. Washington Commanders in the end zone was wrapped up by the New York Giants. Um, please, please. My attorney is Kenneth Diesenhoff. <laughs> uh, if you're looking to sue me for my <laughs> earlier comments. Um, but Dennis, yeah, Dennis, your Washington guys got screwed. Um it was a it was a completely missed call, and my reason behind it is 
is that team is for sale and they're trying to sell that team with this whole thing that went down with Snyder. And um, Snyder has been a thorn in the side of the NFL since day one. Y'all, you all don't think so? When Snyder took this team over, Snyder broke the budget for the best team on paper. (laughs) When you go back and look at the team that Snyder assembled when he bought the team, you go back and look, and you, you, if you didn't know anything, you'd be like, damn, they had Bruce Smith. They had, yeah, they had everybody, but everybody was old and past their prime. <laughs> my man, I remember, I remember when they signed all the people. My man, Dennis, I remember Dennis was pissed. <laughs> like, damn, it'd be great if this was like 1992, but. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I remember my boy Dennis, and thank you for your service. I remember you was pissed, bro. You was so upset at the fact that they, it was a debacle. Ever since Snyder took over, this team has just been a debacle. So um, I got to get ready to get out of here. But ESPN informs owners that teams that spent $800 on fire coaches and executives over the last five years, they need to clean it up. They need to clean it up. You got to give coaches it. Look, Joe Judge came in there during COVID, which was the toughest time to coach a team, brand new coach, and he didn't have any results, and they fired him, and he ended up coming here, back here, as as a slash, should have been a offensive coordinator. Let's get real here. Uh, but Joe Judge didn't really get his chance. Brian Flores down in Miami, he was doing good, but he didn't even really get a chance. They let Brian Flores go. But again, you know, it's a waste of money. It, it, a coach isn't going to come in here and make a difference in one year. This is the NFL. It's tough. It's tough. And the way that they've been doing these schedules is crazy. So uh, the NFL has just told them, clean it up. Clean it up. At least at least do, do coaches under what you do for the rookies. Rookies are a five-year contract. If you're drafted, it's a five-year contract. you got five years to prove yourself. If you don't prove yourself in five years, you don't get no bonus, you don't get nothing, you're fired. You're cut. You go to another team. Let's let's put this in place with coaches. If you don't want to do five, do a three-year. Do a three-year deal for coaches. I, I, think, I think five years fair. I think if you're going to give rookies five years, you should give head coaches five years. That's my opinion. If you think so, put it in the chat. Because that's what I think. I, no coach can come in there in one and two years and get stuff done, especially if you got a if you got a crappy GM who's been you know overseeing your draft. Let's look, you know let's talk about Dallas, where where Jerry Jones controls everything. You go down there and you're a head coach. Guess what? You ain't running that team. You you ain't trust and believe me. You ain't running the Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones is, and he will fire you just as quick if you don't do what he says. Trust and believe me. All right. Um, T.C. Taylor has been named the head coach of Jackson State University. T.C. Taylor and um, Coach Prime, they lost. Wack lost to Meek, North Carolina, this weekend in the championship. Tough, tough loss. Tough, tough loss. Um, The kid Hogan dropped the pass in overtime, and that let North Carolina win. Um, Tough, tough loss. But T.C. Taylor has now been named the head coach for JSU moving into the 2023 season. Uh, getting into the Biden bombshells. Biden, in a newly surfaced video from November 4th, declares the Iranian nuclear talks are dead. And he said, we're not going to talk about it, and we're not going to put it out there. Um, and now people are up in arms because they didn't want to talk about it. But people forget, we, we Trump had already pulled us out of that, that deal. So, and once he pulled us out, everybody said they're not gonna they're not gonna come back to the table and talk. They're not gonna. And everybody said this. So when they pulled us out, um, he said he's not gonna go back. So now people are up in arms, and you know, I don't get it, but we'll we'll keep an eye on this. We'll see because things can change. We'll see. Um, Ukraine invasion, people, 300 days in. 300 days in, and neither side looks like they're giving up. And today was the 300th day. Zelensky went to Bahrain um, to support the troops uh, because that is a critical area of the Ukraine where they have now almost pushed the Russian forces out. Almost have pushed them out. 
um, and they've got those Patriot missiles on the way. Um, Putin has now said that he is now going to put more modern weapons on their their militia support, uh, military support. Um, here's my problem with that one, Putin. You should have did that from day one. If you're really truly ready to take over the Ukraine, you should have had your modern weapons ready to go from day one, or, or you probably wouldn't have been in this situation. So for Putin to say that now, I feel like he's just grasping at straws now because he he's getting his ass kicked. 300 days in, you're a superpower. You shouldn't, you Putin shouldn't be 300 days in on the Ukraine. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be. Nope. No ifs, no ands, no buts. So this is an this is an embarrassment. An embarrassment. Hey everybody. Thank you for tuning in the show. Check out those who supported the show with the hats. I want to thank everybody for checking it out. As I said, this is our Christmas show. And um getting ready to kick off the end of the year. Take my time off. All the shows that I'm involved with producing. Make sure to check them out. Again, 2023. All new production. For Maddie C Sports for you and me, Oscar Mike Radio, Happy Hour with Lito, all of them got a brand new look. Drafting the circuits, I there's some stuff coming up with drafting the circuits that I really can't talk about right now. Um, I got to get with Tony Arnold on that on Hoobazoo, and we got to see what's going on there. Um, but please, again, support our shows. Again, I said the booth will be back here with a new look. Um, happy holidays from Bat Bus. All buses are free still until December thirty first. All bat buses are free. Please take advantage of that. Also, today is the last day for Mark's Army Book Drive. If you got any books you want to donate to be sent off to the military, drop them off at 48 Lodge Street in Brockton. New books only. Also, tomorrow, December 21st, Community Holiday Hope Dinner. Free toys and giveaways. Lincoln Congressional Church, 180 Oak Street in Brockton. <coughs> Live performance by Viana. Marie, tomorrow, December 21st, 4 p.m., the doors open. Also, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for tuning into the show and um, supporting it. I want to make sure that everybody has a great holiday season. Be safe. Make sure you're back here to watch the booth in 2023. Um, Again, thank you for everybody for supporting Showing some love and hanging out with us in the VIP at the Boston Music Awards last week. It was a good time. Um, and again, keep an eye out for all of the new production for the Cinetorn production shows next year. It's going to be crazy. With that being said, let me see if I can pull up this video. It's 813. I'm going to try to pull up this other Christmas video for you guys. If you guys you guys want to see this other Christmas video, <laughs> um, if you missed it last week, I'll, I'll pull it up. Let me see if I can pull it up um, for you real quick before we get out of here. And then what I'll do is uh, I'll have SpongeBob take us home after that. Um, so if you guys want to see it, let me let me know. Let me know if you want to. I showed I showed that video before the show. You guys loved it. You thought it was funny. If you guys want to see another one of their uh, videos. Let me know. Let me know, and I'll I'll pull it up. And let me get it for you right now. Let me know. Let me know. I gotta see it. What's up? Love you too, brother. Love you too. What's up, Kevin Jeffries? Come on, guys. If you want to see it, you gotta let me know. If you want to see the one from last week, you gotta let me know. Or I'm not showing it. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let him take us home. <laughs> if you want to see it. Um, let me know. They want to see it. Everybody wants to see it. Everyone wants to see it. Y'all want to see the Ratchet of the Bells from last week? Y'all want to see it? Hold on. Here we go. I'm, I'm, let me get it up for you. Here we go. And then SpongeBob will take us home. All right. We'll do this, and then we'll do SpongeBob. will take us home. But here's last week, Ratchet of the Bells. Drop in the chat. If you love the one that I showed earlier tonight, here we go. Here you go, guys. Thank you so much.
and thank you for having your phones turned off. All right, our next selection will be Carol of the Bells. Are you serious right now? It's important. I'm sure it is. Girl, that's a bell. Yes, you can tell. You're wondering if he's cheating. Pick up his phone. You will be blown. Once you find out, please do not shout. Ding, dong, ding, dong. You have been wrong. You have been tricked. That's his side, bitch. You had no clue. What can you do? It's time to get really ratchet. You did not know. You're as a hoe. You are the wife. Where'd your holiday spirit go? You can go have Tiffany shove that Christmas tree up your ass. I'm gone. Listen to the choir. He is a liar. He played you with another booth. Well, see you next Tuesday. Thank you for listening to The Booth on Hoobazoo and HatcherRadio.com. Please follow the Facebook page and subscribe to the podcast at Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. The Booth is a Sinister One production hosted by Sinister One. I've got to start hanging out with friends that are a little more intelligent and understand politics and stuff. It's just that I'm up on this level up here and all my friends are down here. Me, nah. You guys, nah. Maybe a little more down, down in here. Screw you guys, I'm going home. I smoke, I drink, I do my thing. These bitches hating, so you know I got to make it plain. Don't do cocaine with your chick, my main. We stick together, true forever, yeah, you know we bang. I miss those days, which was easy. If only I made it, bitch, you don't repeat. Now that I done upgraded, I've been upstate, and y'all think I'm playing. And I gotta hit now for these weak assholes who think I ain't slaying. Try me, try me, and I'll probably end up laughing because I never back down. I'm that chick with a clean ass whip. I don't need that shit, it's like I'm my own now. I get hurt, I get tired of fussing, fighting, guess I gotta crack down. Don't mess with me, cause on everything, I'ma have to bring the whole city out. W-H-O-O-B-A-Z-O-O, that's your website, enter your website, enter your website, enter your website.